2022 brought heaps of exciting new gravel tech and plenty of trends to talk about. But there's more to come from a discipline that is really still finding its feet. Now here to chat through it all is Bike Radar's best Scottish gravel rider, it's Jack Luke. A party of one, but I'll take the win. <laughs> Showing it straight into our first prediction, Liam. Yes, absolutely. And I actually think it's one from you. It is indeed. And I'm predicting that gravel suspension tech won't go mainstream in 2023. Okay, so why do you say that? Wow. Last year saw the arrival of suspension equipped bikes from the likes of Luff, BMC, Barrier, YT and Specialized. We also saw gravel specific suspension forks released by Fox, High Ride and Intend. Cane Creek, Redshift and others also released suspension-ish products, all of which aim to improve on bike comfort. Now all of this actually tallies with our 2022 gravel tech predictions. So is this actually going to stop? or are the public just not buying into gravel suspension? What's happening there? Now, while the industry has pumped lots of investment into gravel suspension tech, I am doubtful that the average bike buyer will opt for suspension for some time. For example, I am yet to see a single suspension equipped gravel bike on my local trails. And by that, I mean the likes of like a Lauf Cycler or a bike fitted with RockShox Rudy or Fox Tapercast Fork, excluding tech editors from Bike Radar. Yeah. Now that is quite surprising as the southwest of England's generally boggy, steep, muddy and rough gravel trails are just the place one might expect to see a suspension equipped gravel bike. Now while comments rarely reflect the majority view, the discussion, the discourse on any article or social post we publish about gravel bike suspension is pretty mixed. Yes, I would say that's quite accurate. I'm definitely not dismissing gravel bike suspension as a concept and you only need to look at mountain bikes to realise that adding suspension to an off-road bike is a logical next step. But the previously predictive takeover of squashy bits is some way off. Uh, one to keep a close eye on this year then. Have you bought a gravel bike with suspension? Or are they just not for you? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Moving on, and Ben Delaney has our next one. Yes, those who have been on the Bike Radar YouTube channel for some time might remember Ben, Bike Radar's former US editor-in-chief, now gravel cowboy, striking out solo in beautiful Colorado. Now, Ben says that gravel events and bikes will continue to embrace what he is calling the mullet approach. What in the gravel is that? He's basically saying it will continue to be business in the front and party in the back. Now, in terms of events, it's fair to say that gravel attracts a wide spectrum of abilities, from people like me to actual athletes. And it's one of the things that we love so much about the discipline. Absolutely, but while some events have moved to kind of separate starts for competitors and completers, Ben reckons that most events will continue to be that mass chaos start that we absolutely love. Similarly for bikes, well, we've got plenty of go fast gravel bikes, adventure gravel bikes, and do all gravel machines. Ben thinks that the gravel bikes that are fun for everyday riding, still work for racing, will prove most popular. Absolutely. Now, moving on now, we come to Ash Quinlan, who believes that 2023 will see a big gravel tire development race. It's certainly no secret that a good set of tires can boost your performance and enjoyment on a ride. Liam, as a cyclocross racer that loves to obsess over tires, what do you make of this? Oh, well, I could discuss tread patterns, casing thread counts, and the joy of gluing tubulars until the counts come home. I won't, don't worry, but this doesn't come as a surprise to me. I mean, look at the mountain bike world. Racers and recreational riders are incredibly fussy about tread pattern width, compounds, and casings. Roadies want loads of grip without rolling resistance. I mean, we're all as bad as each other, aren't we, really? Very, very much so. Gravel racers are not immune to being picky. And now, Ash says that with the performance edge being sharpened by the rise of UCI sanctioned events, we could see a tyre development race ensue. When you think about how long and demanding gravel races are, you'd absolutely want something faster. You also don't want to waste energy out of corner, so grip would be nice too. And then whether you're a completer riding to some kind of performance goal, or just want to enjoy the ride and finish, the tires you use will play a huge role in determining how much fun you're going to have. Now on to you, Liam. What is your personal prediction? I'm thinking that none of us will agree on anything. That's pretty much it. So gravel pros 
will naturally want to be as efficient as possible. However, their inability to reach a gentleman's hmm. agreement to not use aero bars in mass start events resulted in unbound race organizers banning them. Then the Gravel World Championships will roll around and some people will be up in arms because the course isn't gravelly enough. Others will lament the presence of professional road riders. The Gravel Worlds, after all, must surely be reserved for retired racers and Instagram influencers. No? Yes. <laughs> Matthew van der Poel will then turn up on his road bike again, prompting outrage from everyone who has purchased or is sponsored to use a bike with any form of suspension. As a result, I foresee another year of needless, baseless, and frankly quite annoying arguments within the gravel racing and events world. And if you don't agree with Liam, you're just proving his point. Yes, <laughs> get in the comments and prove my point for me. Now, next up, Warren Rossiter believes that brands will invest more time designing proper gravel kit. Some of this we love, and some of this will not so much. Starting with the good stuff, we'll hopefully see the end of super stiff cross-country shoes adapted as gravel bike shoes, which basically means making them either sand or cargo coloured. Warren says that shoes with more flex in the sole are better for gravel, better when you're landing a drop, better for damping vibrations, and better for the inevitable hiker bike sections on any adventurous gravel ride. Clothing, he says, will continue to be designed with smarter gravel designs features. Again, not just road lycra in muted colours or mountain bike kit in the same. Some smaller brands such as Seven Mesh, Map, Isidore and Q36.5 are already pushing some more considered designs, as are some of like the bigger brands like Castelli and Sportful and Endura. What we're not so keen on are gravel-specific sunnies. What a time to be alive. No. George Scott, meanwhile, big dog editor-in-chief, yeah. foresees the divergence of gravel into sub-disciplines continuing. There will still be grey areas, all bikes exist on a spectrum after all, but clearer groupings will emerge from muddy waters, from aero go-fast gravel bikes at one end to suspension-equipped, big-tired bike-packing bikes at the other. Now, okay. The latter is definitely just a drop bar hardtail though, we can all agree on that. Yes, and with that, George thinks that we'll see more brands launch a second gravel bike to provide an alternative option to its original take on the genre. So if you're buying a gravel bike, you need to choose your fighter wisely <laughs> based on an honest, and I mean honest, appraisal of where you're riding and what you want it for. Now, if you want to see just how different two gravel bikes can be, we made an excellent video on just that subject. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next one. Hey! Flip the table.